Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a sequel video to a video I originally posted in 2017 um, called Writing Exponential Functions Given a Graph or Given Some Points. Um, for some weird reason, it's exploded in some ways and it has over 100,000 views. I have no idea why. Um, I'm a lowly math teacher here in Queens, New York, but um, mostly posting videos for my students, but for whatever reason, people have found uh, that video helpful, and they've asked a number of questions in the comments, some of which have taken me, obviously, four years to respond to. Um, so I thought I'd do that with this video here. Um, most of the questions have sent around the idea of, what if the points are not so nice? What if it's not as obvious that it's, you know, a pattern of times two that we can clearly see, or something you could do mentally? Um, and we want to still show an algebraic process because we can always refer to using the TI-84, your graphing calculator, and doing an exponential regression. That will always work, right? Utilizing list one and list two on there. Um, but what if we want to show a process, maybe a question's asking uh, to show our work or, you know, to only answer this algebraically. So let's go ahead and get started. If you do find this video informative, if it did help you out, um, please feel free to subscribe and also continue to ask questions. I'm going to try to do a little bit of a better job in terms of responding and also posting other videos. So if you have a topic that um, you want to see done or you know something like that, try to be as specific as possible, saying something like, can you make a video on solving equations um, is a little vague. So if you say something like, can you solve uh, you know, a, qu a quadratic equation with fractional coefficients using completing the square, um, then I have a better idea of what you're looking for. So feel free to explore all those options. But anyway, let's get started. They are nice enough to tell us here, obviously, it is exponential. If it just says create a function, we don't know if it's linear. We don't know what it is since we only have two points. So we know this is exponential. So what I'm going to do first is anytime I'm writing an equation, whether it be linear, whether it be quadratic, what, I like to kind of write the, the generic version of it the 101 version, whatever you like to call it, um, a times b to the x power. Now, covered in the previous video and in exponential functions in general is the idea that a is our initial value, the y-intercept of the function, and b is what we call the common multiplier, the base, common ratio, you know, a lot of synonyms there. I usually refer to it as the common multiplier. So in that quote unquote nice case or easy case, it was something like times two in the video or times three. Um, obviously this one's not gonna work out as nice. So doing this algebraically, where we're gonna start is by actually using a system. So what we're gonna do is plug in each pair of points separately to create two equations. So I'm carefully going to replace g of x with that particular y value, that output value. And obviously I'm gonna be stuck with two variables, a and b we still don't know. I'm also just kind of arranging them a certain way. You might be saying, why did you start with 125? I usually like to put the larger y value on top here and you'll see why in a moment. Okay, and I'm doing the same thing for that first row. That's the y value and our x value is negative two here. Okay, so we have a system on our hands now, right? We have a set of two equations, we have two variables, we can solve this. There's enough information there to solve this. One alone wouldn't be enough information. Now, I mentioned a few moments ago that I set this up a certain way. Not that this would make a, you know, a very big deal, but um, I usually like to put the larger y value on top because what we're actually gonna do here, similar to elimination method, um, when you're solving systems, we're going to divide one equation by the other. Seems very drastic. Also seems like, why are we allowed to do this? Just like with elimination, where you sometimes add your equations together or subtract them, um, we're kind of following the same process, right? It's weird at first, but we're really dividing by the same thing on both sides. Since these are uh, equal to one another, you know, it's, it would be the same as dividing by three on both sides of an equation. We're not breaking any math laws here. All right, so let's divide. We want to grab a calculator here. 125 divided by 1.28 okay, is going to give us 
So your calculator should say 97.65, blah, blah, blah. If you hit math frac, hit math, the button below alpha, hit enter for frac, it will make it into a fraction for you. This way, even if you leave it on your calculator, you could at least write it down a little bit cleaner. Now, what happens when we divide a by a? a divided by a is going to be a to the zero power or simply one. In short, we like to say it cancels. Now for b cubed divided by b to the negative second, we're gonna use our exponent rules there. We subtract exponents when we divide, which means if we subtract negative two, we're gonna get b to the fifth. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. We, we eliminated a, if we wanna think of it that way. Right, now how do we solve this? What we're really gonna do here, just like if it said b squared, we take the square root. Since it says b to the fifth, we're gonna take the fifth root. Now, some people have a little bit of trouble doing that on their calculator. That would be found if you hit math, option five, and you can make it any root you want. So one option that I usually tell my students is to use exponents instead. And with exponents, when you're taking the square root, the cube root, it's just the reciprocal power. So in this case, if it's to the fifth, you would raise it to the one fifth. And think about why this works, right? Our exponent rule for when we raise a power to a secondary power is to multiply. So five to the one fifth is just gonna give us b to the first. Okay, and this is a little bit easier to type on the calculator as well. So the 31, 25 over 32, if you still have it on your home screen, just hit answer to the one fifth power. Hit the exponent button, make your exponent one fifth. And once again, if it does give you a decimal, depending on what your settings are, hit math frac, and that will give us our B value. So I'm getting five halves. I like that. I prefer working with improper fractions. So if you got a decimal, if you write a decimal, that's certainly fine, but improper fractions work. All right, so we're halfway there, a little bit more than halfway. We know the B value. So think back to if you've learned systems in the past, once you figured out X, you would go back to the originals and find Y. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take that B value that we just got. We're gonna choose either the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter, uh, of the red equations that we had from earlier, and we're gonna substitute in. So I'm gonna substitute in a B value of five halves to the third power. And now I'm just simply gonna solve this. Five halves to the third power is 125 over eight. To get rid of that coefficient, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal. And this works out nicely. I don't even need a calculator here. We simply get a value. Again, multiplying by the reciprocal when you have a fractional coefficient, just cancels everything out there. And we get A equals eight. Now, this is frustrating. We did all this work. We don't wanna just stop right here. Did we technically create a function? We've done all the work, but we still haven't technically created the function, so now let's just go ahead and write it. You always wanna be careful too, if they ask you to call something a certain you know, function name, you wanna be sure to use that. As silly as it sounds, if you were to write y equals here, certain, depending on you know, what, what tests you take, regions, um, they can take off for that. So you wanna be careful, if they ask me to call it g of x, I'm gonna call it g of x. Once again, I like the improper's 2.5, wouldn't lose you points or anything, but I prefer improper's. And that is our function. Now what can we do to check here? We can type this into y equals on our calculator. We can verify the table. These are nice integer x values. So just scanning quickly in the table um, will show that this is accurate. We can obviously also do the exponential regression that we mentioned earlier. The exponential regression, remember, is found using L1 and L2, your list, and then hitting stat calc option zero. It says expreg. It will perform an exponential regression through a minimum of two points that you provide. All right, so that wraps up. Hopefully that's answered some of those uh, long awaiting questions that people have been throwing out on that weirdly, insanely popular video that I've posted. Um, once again, if you do have any follow-ups with this, if you have another topic, you like this one and you want something else, I'd be more than happy to help out. Just throw it in the comments and I'll try to respond in less than four years. I can promise you that. Uh, but thank you for watching, guys, and everyone have a great day.